Welcome to one of Clearview Federal Credit Union's free financial seminars. My name is Melissa Kunkel, Relationship Development Officer here at Clearview. Today, I would like to present to you Build a Basic Budget, the five step spending plan. Following this seminar, you will be receiving activity worksheets to help you create your own personal budget. Let's get started. Our seminar objectives today are the following. Know how to set up a spending plan. Identify spending leaks. Track spending, save money. Set financial goals. Audit progress and revise goals. Use financial tools. Many of you may be doing some of these things but most people haven't mastered all of them. The goal of this seminar is to give you the tools to plan and manage your spending effectively. Remember, establishing a plan before a financial crisis will put you in a better position to weather both major and minor setbacks, such as a loss of job, medical emergency, or unexpected repair bills. There are many benefits of managing your money. It can free up time to allow you to do the things that you enjoy. It can provide you with less stress, which gives you better health. You can achieve your goals and gain satisfaction. And also you can have greater control, which gives you peace of mind. Think about some of the more difficult times in your life. How did your financial situation affect that situation? Did it make it more stressful? What about the periods of time in which you felt like life was going well? How well were you in control of your finances at the time? While money is not everything, the sense of financial control definitely gives you peace of mind and a positive outlook. Let's take a moment to take this financial quiz to think about where you are now. Ask yourself, do you feel like you're in control of your money? Do you have a spending plan or budget in writing? Do you have financial goals in writing? Do you have an adequate emergency fund of at least three to six months of income? Do you regularly track your spending using a method such as a receipt can, ledger, envelopes, account book, or computer program? Have you calculated your net worth in the past year? Do you regularly talk with family members about money and financial goals? And are you on track with saving money for long-term financial goals? While those questions help us to think about where we are now, we also want to consider more areas for improvement. Do you spend more than you make? Do you spend uncontrollably? Do you neglect your emergency savings? Do you charge instead of saving? And do you pay yourself first? To gain control of your finances, it's important to set specific financial goals. But what does that mean? One method is to set smart financial goals. This method helps you to break down your goals and make them easier to achieve. Here's an example. If you simply say, I need to pay off my credit card debt, you're less likely to reach your goal then if you use the SMART method and say, I will pay off my credit card debt of $1,200 within 12 months by taking lunch to work instead of eating out and drinking regular coffee instead of an expensive latte daily. 
This is an example of a specific goal that is measurable because it's $1,200, adjustable because you can drink regular coffee, realistic because it's within your budget, and time-oriented because it's within 12 months. Once you set your SMART financial goals, now break them down into short, medium, and long-term timeframes. Short-term are goals within six months, intermediate within one to five years, and long-term longer than five years. It's important to make sure that you know the difference. We budget for our short-term goals, we save for our intermediate goals, and we invest for our long-term goals. We are focusing on our short-term goals and establishing a budget and a spending plan today. A spending plan is a simple, straightforward tool. Many people don't take time to write down their plan for how they're going to spend their income. With no plan, money often seems to fly out the window. A spending plan or budget helps you to do several things. A budget is a roadmap that helps you figure out whether you're going in the direction you want to go financially. It helps you make informed choices about where your money goes leading to a more enriched life. It tells you whether you're living within your means. That means whether your income exceeds your expenses. It helps you meet your savings goals and prepare for emergencies. Without a roadmap for managing your money, you lose control, have more stress, and are less likely to achieve your goals. With a roadmap, you control your financial future. As you begin using your plan, be flexible. Make adjustments as you go along. It could take several attempts to determine the categories and amounts that work for your particular situation. The five steps to a successful spending plan are listed as follows. Step one, list monthly income sources and expenses. Step two, determine where your money goes. Step three, balance your income and expenses. Step four, review and communicate. Step five, manage your system. Now let's look at each step in more detail so you get a clear picture of how to set up your own spending plan. As mentioned, the first step is to list all your monthly income sources and expenses. There is lots of income sources to consider when doing so. Consider your paycheck, your rental income, tax refunds, gifts, earned income credit, bonuses, interest, pension, child supports or alimony, dividends, social security, You can also think about dividing your expenses into three categories. Fixed expenses typically include mortgage, car payment. Flexible expenses include food or clothes. Periodic expenses could be taxes or insurances. You can also think of expenses in terms of these four categories. Necessary expenses include basic needs like shelter, food, utilities. Discretionary can be something like vacation or entertaining. Remember, 
that you can also use a miscellaneous category for unplanned expenses. However, the general miscellaneous category in your budget should not be a catch all because that would make it difficult to track exactly where your money goes. If miscellaneous expenses are more than 10% of your income, you may need to do a better job of tracking expenses. If you don't use all of the money allocated in the miscellaneous category, use the excess to pay off debt and to build up your savings. There are many methods to track spending, such as online banking apps, computer programs, even a receipt method. If you don't get a receipt, make one. If you lose your receipt, tape an envelope to the refrigerator to keep your receipts in. Keep your receipts for three months, ideally, and group them by the categories that we just discussed. Add each category, divide by three, and that's your average monthly expenditure on that category. You can also use the envelope method. Write each category on the envelope and place the receipts in them. Don't forget the old way of the checkbook and account book that lots of people still enjoy to use. Once you start tracking, you'll figure out where your money is really going. Then you can identify your spending leaks. Step two. Determine where your money is going. Remember the little things add up. Calculate what you spend on small purchases. Calculate the cost of soda, fast food, coffee, downloading apps and media, and so on. Do a similar activity at home with family members, including children. This activity will help you identify spending leaks that may help you balance your budget. However you track, it's important to meet regularly. Don't wait for problems to occur. Communicate with your family. Allow all members of the family to participate in the discussion. Clearly identify the problem. Is it overspending? Is one person a spender and another person a saver? Is there a problem with compulsive or impulsive shopping? Is there simply no plan? Listen to each family member. Ask questions to clarify. Understand each person's values and attitudes towards money. Don't blame and be ready to compromise and negotiate. Consider a written contract to avoid misunderstandings. The third step in developing an effective spending plan is to balance your income. What comes in with your expenses? What goes out? These should be equal. Once you start tracking where your money goes, you'll get a sense of whether you're on track and spending less than you earn. Matching income with expenses is the step that many people don't make time for, but it's important to do so if you wish to make the most of your resources and achieve your goals. Based on this analysis, make adjustments as necessary to your spending and saving habits. Remember, savings is an expense category. As you get expenses under control, and as income increases, put more money into some form of savings account. An important financial tool is the cash flow statement. It tells you where your money went last year. It forces you to look at the money coming in and the money going out. And like I mentioned before, the two columns must be equal. 
You will be receiving activity handouts following this presentation, as I mentioned at the beginning, which will include a cash flow statement for you. I encourage you to begin to identify budget categories that apply to your specific situations. Cross off the ones that you don't use and add the ones that apply to you. This slide here shows an example of a cash flow statement. By tracking where your money goes and comparing income with expenses, you can identify spending problems and make adjustments by either increasing your income or reducing expenses. Again, savings is considered a regular expense. Make sure to pay yourself first. Step four of the five spent step spending plan is to review and communicate your spending. Does your plan fit with your goals? Remember that we've already talked about tracking methods, such as a computer program receipt method or checkbook ledger. After you find spending leaks, analyze your plan to see if your plan fits with your goals. Think about some examples of changes that you can make if your expenses exceed your income. Perhaps eat out less, get a part-time job, delay some major purchases, have a garage sale. As you review your spending plan, remember that there are many different situations and things we can plan for and things we cannot that have potential to affect our budget. Some of the most costly situations that can throw a wrench in our plan could be something like a medical emergency, a holiday, planning for a vacation, repair bills, lack of emergency fund. There are also day-to-day -day pitfalls on a smaller scale that can drain your budget dry, like leaving the lights on, throwing out leftover food, having a leaky faucet, late fees, parking tickets, ignoring repairs. Here are some practical money saving tips. Pay off debt with the highest interest rate first while making minimum payments on all others. Consider consolidating your debts. Determine whether refinancing a mortgage or even an auto loan makes sense for you. Bundle your insurance coverage with one company to take advantage of discounts. Shop for a credit card like you shop for anything else. Consider the annual fee interest rate, grace period, cost of late fees, and over the limit fees and penalties, such as whether the interest rate increases if you pay a bill late. Use credit cards wisely. More money saving tips. Don't forget to mail rebate forms use coupons, but only for items you normally would buy anyways. Brown bag your lunch. It can save you big bucks over the course of a year. Adjust your thermostat and use ceiling fans to cut energy costs. Make savings a habit. You can use payroll deposit and automatic transfers, holiday clubs, automatic withdrawals. If you get a raise, Save the difference for a year, or when you get a raise, automatically contribute that amount to retirement savings plan, such as an IRA or 401k. One way to save money is to use the step down principle. If you follow the step down principle, you reduce spending in gradual stages 
rather than eliminating spending on an item completely. You can use this principle for many different kinds of household budget categories. If you want to purchase clothing, think of the top of the stairs as a high-end department store. The next step down may be a discount store, the next factory outlet, and then a consignment store or a thrift shop or flea market. The more steps down, the greater the savings. Another use of the step down principle is for frequency or amounts of a purchase. For example, you may decide to down out, dine out five times a month instead of 10. Or you may step down by eliminating an appetizer, a drink, or a dessert when you eat out. This principle allows you to explore alternative ways to get more from the reduced amount of money you plan to spend. Some resources for saving money, you can visit these websites, America Saves, Consumer Federation of America, or the US Department of Energy. The fifth and final step in developing an effective spending plan is to commit to manage your system for the long term. The key to any successful spending plan is to get into the habit of managing a system that works for you. Track your expenses regularly, pay your bills regularly, balance your checkbook regularly, review your goals annually or after major life changes, and think about does your plan fit with your goals. Take advantage of online tools that allow you to track budget and manage your personal finances for free. As you can see, you need to start with the end in mind. Always keep your goals front and center as you develop your roadmap for spending. Now that you have the tools to develop your own personal action plan, think about how you plan to identify your spending leaks, what smart goals you want to set for yourself that are specific, measurable, adjustable, realistic, and time-oriented. Try several tracking methods and then use the one that works best for you. Use spending apps and the cash flow statement to help you reach your goals. Give yourself an annual checkup and make adjustments as necessary. Remember, Clearview can help you with all of your financial challenges. I wanna thank you for joining me this afternoon and please feel free to let us know if you have any questions at this time.